Today's lesson is Disabled by Wilfred Owen, stanzas 5 and 6. Sorry, we had no sound there. Technical lovely folks that we have every day. So our word of the day is cor. It looks like corpse, but it's pronounced cor, which is a noun. And it basically means a division or subdivision in the army. Um, a branch of an army assigned to do a particular task. So, example, by midday, the 5th Army Corps was bombarded. Today's spelling word is annihilate. Annihilate. I'm going to annihilate you if you don't subscribe to my channel. <laughs> right, our pun of the day is Russian dolls. They're just so full of themselves. All right, so stanzas five and six. Excuse me while I shut the door. The dog's just opened it. Hello, Lee. Okay, stanza five we're going to look at first. Some cheered him home, but not as crowds cheer. Go! Only a solemn man who brought him fruits thanked him and then inquired about his soul. So, question 25, if you're revising, if you've done the, the questions on the Aim Higher resource sheet, if you have, then you can obviously look at your answers, expand them, develop them, add to your notes. And if you haven't done the questions, this will just be a great revision. So the word choice of some is deliberately put at the start of the line to contrast with the previous stanza where he was talking about how everyone cheered all the soldiers off to war with the big massive noise and welcome, you know, cheered them off, the big send off. But here, immediately Owen uses the word some cheered him home to basically contrast with the idea of everybody sending them off. So he doesn't basically receive the hero's welcome that he expects. You know, that's obviously the picture that he was painted by the propaganda, but that's certainly not what happens here. So this contrasts with all of them touch him. So we've got that in stanza two talking about you know the nurses not touching him any, you know all the women touch him like a clear disease so it just to emphasize his decreasing popularity and you've got the word cheer repeated two or three times in different ways so that again is just to portray the contrast you know so in the enthusiasm of football games versus this apathetic return home you know that you didn't people get more enthusiastic and excited about a football game rather than these wounded soldiers coming home, which is obviously talking about the irony of that. All right, so there's an anticlimax in this stanza compared to the climactic end. The previous stanza talking about the massive, you know, cheer as the send-off. So it, just to show that war isn't this positive picture that they imagined or that was suggested it was, so this is obviously going to be a huge disappointment for the soldier coming home. So he's going to feel rejected by society and the people in his life. He would also maybe have a, an idea of the survivor's guilt, because obviously some of the men didn't make it home. He has made it home. However, he's also left early because of his wounds. So he'd be left with the survivor's guilt that he's left and be friends on uh, the front line back in the war zone. So... You know, that could also suggest why there's not this big massive hero's welcome. Maybe if it was a big group of them coming home, it would be a different story. But him coming home alone wounded is certainly not getting the welcome that he deserves. Okay, so look at its structure. So look at the structure. This stanza is very short compared to the length of the other ones. Even visually on the page, you can see that. So this is obviously a sort of turning point here because up to this point especially the previous stanza that had the big massive list of all the exciting reasons why he's enlisting and joining up this is short and sweet for well it's not sweet but it's certainly short short to have that anticlimax and to show that the hero's welcome is as short as the stanza portrays you know so up to that point it's building up and building up the excitement which is why it's such a long stanza and here we've got that so the structure is very clever and the fact that it mirrors you know how few people were there to welcome him back so it's just to show you know the short-lived glory as well of war that what he thought it was has certainly not come out to be the case so this is a transition from the soldiers memories 
back to his current life because obviously time and the past and present contrast is a recurring theme and pattern all the way through. So at this point we certainly sympathise with him. He's come home with these life changing injuries and there's nobody there to sort of welcome him back. So at this point Owen's purpose is to show how the men were pitied for their loss and obviously loss of limbs, loss of you know mental health as well because of what they've witnessed. You know, they weren't honoured for the sacrifice that they, you know, that they made and they should have been. So that's obviously his contempt for the, the people at the time. So here there's irony. There's irony the fact that fighting for your country is not valued as much as a football game, for example. You know, not as crowds cheer goals. So people are more enthusiastic about our football game, our sport, than they are to show respect or admiration for the soldiers that are fighting for their country. Question 26. What comparison does he make when describing the public's cheers? What does this suggest about their attitude now? So I've kind of touched on that. Not as crowds cheer goal. So Owen compares the sparse crowd here to the football game, you know, which goes back to his glory days on the field when he was held up in Man of the Match. We've also got a capital letter at the word goal to emphasise that people give it more importance because obviously it's pers it's personified it's given a capital to make it seem important so that's obviously a sense of twisted irony there that you should obviously value soldiers lives more than a game um so basically war is a greater achievement but this huge sacrifice isn't as appreciated as a, a sports match 27 the soldier describes how only one person thanks and why is this so memorable and shocking so it says only a solemn man thanked him and we've got the italics in the word thank to suggest there's maybe not genuine thanks here it's obviously maybe enforced i'll touch on that in a minute he's described as a solemn man so that could suggest that he's very serious face which emphasizes the sort of melancholy mood and tone of this stanza and the mall that again links to the anticlimactic welcome it's a solemn man singular so again, we would expect all his friends and family to be there when he's coming home injured, you know, to show their love and care for him, but he's not. It's just this single person. And this sing serious person could be a government official whose job it is, is basically to thank all the soldiers as they get off or, or board, um, sorry, get on the country, get back to the country, get back home. But, uh, so it suggests like he's not genuinely there just to show thanks, he's been sort of, that's his job anyway, so he would be there. Um, it could also be that due to the soldier's disfigurement that his friends and family are not allowed to come, maybe they don't even know he's come home, that's why we've been kept quiet, because because of the propaganda they don't want to paint the picture of war being, you know, a thing that can destroy your life and your limbs, so perhaps they've not even been allowed to come. It also says inquired about his soul. So, it, you know, like I said, it could be to keep the ugly truth hidden why he's only one person welcoming the soldier. It could also be because of the mention of a soul and also the idea of solemn could be, you know, a religious person. So it could be the homecoming minister whose job it was, was to thank all the soldiers as they came home. But there's also an implication there that he doesn't really genuinely care. It's just that that's his job and his role that he's fulfilling. Also, the mention of a soul. The soul is obviously religiously the last thing to leave your body. So this could be go back to the first stanza where we were looking at how the soldier appears to be half dead, which could imply that he's close to dying here or fighting for his life or feels like he has no life left. You know, the idea of this man reading him the last rites, which is obviously if you think someone's going to pass away. All right, so in summary, stanza five, it looks at the reality and disappointment of returning home without the hero's welcome that you would expect. We've got the idea that this soldier has been psychologically damaged by what he's seen as well as being physically damaged. And even coming home to no crowd would also be damaging. And the lack of people showing genuine empathy for him so the idea that society values sport more than the war veterans that are returning okay stanza six now he will spend a few sick years in institutes and do what things the rules consider wise and take whatever pity they might go 
Tonight he noticed how the women's eyes passed from him to the strong men that were whole. How cold and late it is. Why don't they come and put him into bed? Why don't they come? Okay, so question 20A. Thinking ahead, how does the soldier feel about his future? Quote three things. So now he will spend a few sick years in institutes. So the word now is like an, one of those absolute certain words, like it's, he knows this is going to happen. So it returns us again to his current existence. So we know that we're back in the present tense, the present time. It says a few sick years. So that's kind of flippant in its tone, isn't it? It's a bit ambiguous. He doesn't know how long his recovery or his new life, you know, with trying to adjust to his, his disability, how long that's going to take. So his future remains quite bleak and uncertain um, because he's going to be confined indoors to hospitals and institutes for the foreseeable. It also says sick years, and obviously the word sick links to illness and sickness, which goes back to him being seen as a clear disease in stanza two. So it's the idea that despite his youth, you know, he's going to be bombarded now with his injuries. That that's going to be sort of the, the key thing in his life. Uh, he will spend, that goes back to now, so it's a definitive statement. This is going to happen. You know, he knows that society is not valuing him now as a person. Uh, it's quite a firm statement. So he's now convinced of this depression vision of the future, you know, stuck indoors and confined to these institutes and hospitals. We've well, then got the do what things the rules consider wise. So he's become totally dependent now on the government despite his youth. You know, he's at their mercy, so therefore he must obey everything that they say. So he's become quite passive, you know, he's not the youthful energy, energetic boy that he was before he left. He's got to follow the orders and uh, of a society that now deems him as an invalid and looks at him like that and forevermore will. He's officially become disabled in all sense of the word. You know, he's disabled in terms of his physical health, mental health, but he's also had to succumb to, you know, getting handouts and things like that. So basically, we can see here that Owen has contempt for the unsympathetic nature of the system and the authorities. He's also angry that the, despite the fact these young men risk their lives, that they've, they, you know, they've, when they return, they're forced to comply and just sort of take what they're given and, you know, the way that they're treated as well. And even the word rules, you know, his life is now co totally focused on rules. It's devoid. There's no hope or joy or fun mentioned. He knows that it's all going to be set in place and it's, you know, there's no, it's all dreary and doom and gloom. Um, we've got do here, take whatever pity they may do. So we've got a bit of ambiguity here with the word do, because obviously to do means to give out or hand out. But it also refers to sign on the dole, so that obviously links to the government benefits. So he's now relying on them in order to survive, so he can no longer work because of what's happened to him and his disabilities. So there's obviously a feeling of helplessness and despair here, the fact that he's got to accept charity and he's relying on them because he can't be active anymore. Whatever pity, so obviously it's like he'll just sort of grasp the crumbs, you know, he'll take whatever he can get. So it's the idea that, again, he's not being seen, you know, he's not being revered or admired as he should be. They do, so the soldier has assumed his role as an object of pity, so, you know, he'll take those handouts. So who are they? There's a mention of the word they a couple of times. So they are obviously society, the non-disabled so it's the comparison, you know, there's an idea of separation here. The fact that he's been ostracised because it's us and them, you know, it's him and them. So the idea that he's not like the rest of society now. He's not viewed as, or identified, he's not got an identity in the place anymore. So this pity is now shared out as a result, removing any genuine emotion or empathy. So he knows that it's just a sort of thing that people say, they don't genuinely feel sorry for him. So based on this, the overall tone of this stanza, sadness, helplessness, despair, contempt and anger from Owen at the way he's treated. Next question, how do the women respond to the soldier now? So obviously he was once really attractive, but it says, Tonight the women's eyes passed from him to the strong men that were whole. So basically tonight 
just like now it brings us back to the current time so the idea that usually at night like at the earlier stands i mentioned all the dates you know that he was going on that's now a thing of the past because tonight and from now he knows that'll never happen again unfortunately it also refers to darkness descending as we near the end of the poem which again reflects the melancholy sad mood <coughs> excuse me so the woman's eyes pass from him so although he was highly attractive before he went to war and he was very much admired by women who were silly for his face like the artist now they just glance and look away dismiss him to look for an able-bodied person so he knows as you mentioned earlier that women's role in his life is now a caring role not a romantic position so he'll not have a lover again he continues to look at women but obviously he now focuses on their eyes because he sees their eyes moving to somebody else so there's an idea there that because he's been through everything he's been through he no longer looks at them in a sort of physical sexual desire way it's more like he's craving some emotional attachment which is obviously not going to be fulfilled because they don't look at him as a person anymore it's just a thing in a wheelchair so the word whole can be ambiguous because obviously literally his body's not whole because he's lost limbs but also metaphorically he doesn't feel like he's got an identity or he's a real person any longer because of how he sees himself and how society views him so he's a shell of the man he once was so it says the strong men that were whole and again in his eyes he's no longer he's incomplete which links back to like half his lifetime and stands the three so he's not whole he's half now half the man he was he feels weak and incomplete without his limbs which obviously just emphasizes that war has destroyed him mentally and physically as well how does the question why don't they come and put him to bed link to the phrase waiting for dark in the first stanza so the poem comes full circle here it goes back to the darkness that was reflected in stanza one so it says how cold and late it is why don't they come and put him into bed so cold goes back to where he talks about shivered in stanza one which is effective so coldness has a, a connotations of weakness loneliness and death but can also imply you know that they treat him coldly as well because they neglect him so he'll never have companionship again they, he won't feel the warm hands that you mentioned earlier he knows that that's never going to happen so there's a sense of emotional coldness here too the punctuation and this part of the of the poem you know the increasing use of capitals uh, and exclamation marks and questions the rhetorical questions just emphasizes his increasing despair towards the end of the poem cold and late so we would expect him to be inside by this point because it's dark it's cold at night so you would expect someone to have taken him in because he can't do it himself but there's nobody there to comfort him so again we get some empathy for him and sympathize with this the fact that he's been ignored so again it links to the past where he was popular now he's very much on his own and isolated it also links to the waiting for dark at the beginning of in, in stanza one because it suggests that you know all this time has passed since then but he's still waiting you know it's the idea that there's a, a longevity happening here that he's not received help in a long time the run on pe repetitive questions we've got a couple in a row so it almost suggests like he's desperate he's almost you could say verging on insanity the constant questions and questions why aren't they coming why aren't they coming so there's a panic here put him into bed so we've got the idea of a bed could link to death as well you know you've got the euphemism lay someone to rest which obviously links to the idea that he wishes that he was dead now so he's crying out for death he wants to be in constant oblivion to escape this torturous life that he finds himself in so <coughs> we've got bed and late so basically the soldiers yearning to escape the horror that is his life now and have endless sleep who are they so why don't they come so they could literally be the nurses or the carers why aren't they coming to help me so he's wondering why you know these carers aren't taking them in they if you think about it a wee bit outside the box could also be society why has everyone abandoned them why have they forgotten them or not seen them as a, a human being anymore despite the fact that he's changed his life for supporting the country 
they could also be a reference to his dead comrades. This could link to the idea that he wants to die. So why don't they come and bring me with them? You know, so it's the idea that he's got that survivor's guilt and he'd rather, you know, they came back and returned and took them away. So basically he wants to be dead like them. So in summary, stands a six. The future outlook for the soldier, alas, looks bleak. You know, he's going to be condemned to governmental charity handouts and a life confined to institutes. He's never going to have a romantic relationship with a woman again because they don't look at him as a whole person. And it's the sense that he's utterly helpless. And because of that reliance on others that he's constantly going to have, like physically or carers, economically the government, there's just a sense of helplessness and despair. So it ends really, really melancholy, like sad. <coughs> okay, tomorrow's lesson, we're looking at, because you now know the poem really well, I'm going to show you how to write a critical essay. So we're going to break it down, a series of lessons. So tomorrow's is going to be how to write a proper introduction to a critical essay. And then as the week goes on, I'll go into how to structure your main body paragraphs and how to do a conclusion. And I'll also do a lesson about what kind of questions will come up in the exam and which ones to pick and how to choose them. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in. If you haven't liked and subscribed on my YouTube channel or the Facebook page, please do so. I will be forever grateful. If you're not on Facebook, that's the links to the Google Classroom where you can access all my free resources and questions on this poem to help you revise it as well. I'm doing these lessons out of the goodness of my little heart, but if you found them helpful and as you want, then chuck me a pound or two to say thanks and I'd be eternally grateful. Love heart. Thanks very much for tuning in. Bye!